language lovers, it's Jessica with For the Love of Languages, and today is a very special day because we're kicking off the 52 Pickup Project. What is the 52 Pickup Project? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about what it is. It's a language exploratory project and a sampler of 52 of the world's languages. It's also a fun way to learn about other people, languages, and cultures, and it's a preview for the potential learners of a particular language. Now let's talk about what it is not. It is not a language instructional program. It is not me trying to learn 52 languages. I repeat, it is not me trying to learn 52 languages. And it's not an ad for italki. But italki is great, though. Yes! Now that we have that housekeeping out of the way, let's commence with our segment on Afrikaans. Afrikaans is a West Germanic language and is spoken in South Africa, Namibia, and parts of Botswana and Zimbabwe. It is one of 11 official languages of South Africa and spoken by around 7 million native speakers in South Africa. It's pretty rare in my neck of the woods to find a native speaker of Afrikaans, so in order to do so, I had to look online. First stop, italki. That's where I found Jeanne. I had actually taken one lesson for the purpose of travel to South Africa, but after resurrecting the project, I chose Afrikaans to be the first language for the 52 Pickup Project debut, because most of our viewers come from native English-speaking backgrounds. I thought this would be a nice way to ease into 52 intense weeks of languages. Let's talk to Jeanne, a native speaker and teacher of Afrikaans, and find out why it's such a worthy language to be our starter. Hi, Janae, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great, thanks, how are you? Fine, um, so I'm, I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about Afrikaans because um, this is uh, something that I've been wanting to learn because I eventually hope to travel to South Africa. And I'm really excited because this is the first uh, language in the whole 52 language um, lineup. Okay. And, uh, um, uh, so most of these languages I'm just sampling, but um, I decided to do, uh, to, I guess, uh, retry this. I, I failed the first time because okay. it's such a big <laughs> and sure. intense effort. Um, so I, um, I was taking Afrikaans and then uh, I just decided I really liked the language. So I, I plan on continuing. <laughs> so um what I would like to talk about today is um, for s some people that don't speak the language and they're and they're looking to learn it, uh, what they can expect. Uh, so I can kind of tell them what I have uh, experienced, but from a teacher's point of view, maybe you can give us a little bit of insight. So I think the burning question for everybody that's starting off is going to be, do students seem to find Afrikaans easy or difficult, and, and what are those reasons? Okay, um, what I found is that most people actually find it very easy, especially if they are English speakers or if they have some kind of a Germanic language background. And that's because Afrikaans, of course, is derived from Dutch, so it has the same basis. And um, in many ways, it's very similar to English. There are even some sentences that are exactly the same. For example, the sentence, my hand is warm, would be, my hand is warm. So it's super easy. You just have to change your uh, pronunciation and, and there you have it. So you can actually speak Afrikaans already. Boom, Afrikaans. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's awesome. And what would you say is your favorite aspect uh, of Afrikaans to teach? For instance, grammar, pronunciation. What do you find the most enjoyable uh, working with students on? Yeah. Um, the thing that I absolutely love is the fact that people pick it up so quickly so we can make progress a lot faster and you can get to the really juicy things. I think for myself as a language learner, that was the most frustrating thing. You start off and there are all these nitty gritty things, but you just actually want to go and say something. And with Afrikaans, you actually can do that. Um, but I also love the history. Um, more recently, I've become fonder of the music and the culture. They've come up 
with a couple of really good movies recently. So um, apart from the language as a culture, it's developed a lot over the last few years. And that makes me excited. And I hope to share that with my students as well. Oh, great. I'd love to hear about some of these movies. I think that would be great for students who are looking for a listening practice. Probably. And, and usually people tend to get more motivated whenever they're um, actively, um, you know, uh, doing some of these things that, that interest them, like listening to music and watching movies. Exactly. Uh, so one thing that I wanted to know was, are there many or some dialects of Afrikaans? Some different yes, so Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, that was <laughs> um, There are, there used to be, let me put it that way. Historically, you had different versions and they were based on the geography. So initially you would have people living in Cape Town itself and they kind of developed their own kind of Afrikaans. And then you had people moving a little bit further inland. They still had a lot of contact with the Cape Townians. And so the language developed a little bit in a different direction as they had more contact with the native tribes in the area. And then you had a third wave of people moving even further inland. And again, their language developed a little bit differently. But in the previous century, there was a great move towards standardization. And you had your first publications in Afrikaans, the first newspapers. Um, so at the moment, there aren't that many dialects. The closest thing you can have to a dialect may be, um, I would say, in Cape Town itself, you, you can tell that there's a difference in the pronunciation. People who are from the Cape area tend to use a slightly different vowel pronunciation. They are a little bit closer to the original Dutch. Um, there's people in the north, like where I'm from, they tend to um, actually over round their vowel sounds where an A sound actually sounds more like an O sound. So they are mutually intelligible, but you can immediately tell, oh, this person is more from the north of the country. This person is more from Cape Town. And then we have um, another version. It's not really a version. It's still standard Afrikaans, but um, there is a specific cultural group. They're also in Cape Town. Um, and this is always so, so tough to explain to my students because in South Africa, this term is entirely normal, but in other cultures, it's, it's a little questionable. But we refer to people who belong to this group as colored people. Mm -hmm. So colored people typically are descendants of the Malay slaves, the Indian slaves, and then also the descendants of intermarriage between the Dutch settlers and the African tribes. And they have kind of developed their own culture um, even though they speak Afrikaans, that is entirely um, easy for me to understand. I can immediately tell a person belongs to this culture by the way they pronounce words. For example, in standard Afrikaans, the letter J is pronounced more like a Y sound in English. Like the word yes is ya. But a person who belongs to the, the colored group, they tend to make the J sound similar to the English J, so they could say something like J for you, um, Jula for you, plural, Ja. And so that's kind of a, another difference in the, the different language forms. That is really interesting information and in how, how that kind of uh, history and uh, shapes, shapes the language. That's very interesting. Absolutely. Um, so I think another thing uh, that people would want to know about Afrikaans is uh, what are some of the common pitfalls and struggles that students t tend to experience at the different levels, such as beginner, intermediate, and, and advanced levels? I would say um, the first thing that they might find a little challenging is just the pronunciation. Of course, the, the alphabet looks the same, but the letters are a little bit different um, when you pronounce them. The good news, however, is that it is far more regular. So once you know that the J sounds like a Y, then pretty much throughout any word in Afrikaans, that would be the sound. So there's a very little variation. Um, so at least that's a plus point. Um, when you get a little bit further into the grammar, there are some other things that are a little tricky. For example, we use past participles as adjectives. Um, and sometimes these past participles are in irregular forms because they came from the Dutch. And that is tough because you, you can't really get a feel for it. Those are the kind of things that you just have to learn. 
there are no rules to follow. So um, that makes it a little tricky. Um, and the third thing that I can think of now is um, the way we do plurals and diminutives. We love our diminutives. We use them all the time. And sometimes they don't follow the pattern. So okay. um, again, it's not something that you necessarily get a feel for it. You just kind of have to learn certain things and that can be tricky. Oh, okay. I think we had talked about uh, oh, one of the diminutives in, in one of our classes. Was it for party? Was it for the word party? Yes, yes. So the word for party is always diminutive, whether it is a big bash or a little one. <laughs> Okay. key. So partai traditionally the party, but we just said partai key. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> and um, are there any other uh, uh, historical or cultural notes that you wanted to fill us in on uh, about the language? Um, something that I absolutely love, I find it so fascinating, is that the very first evidence of written Afrikaans was written in Arabic script. So, really? yes, I mean, that's fascinating. So um, as the Dutch settled their colony in the Cape, they were not allowed to enslave the local people, but they were not opposed to bringing in slaves from other colonies. And so there was a very big group of Malay slaves who came into Cape Town. And um, at that point, they were Muslim. And in the Muslim culture, something that's actually amazing is uh, these young children, especially the boys, would be sent to a school, a madrasa, and then they would learn um, basic reading and writing and arithmetic, arithmetic skills. Um, but the slaves at that point spoke Afrikaans. They had already come into contact with the Dutch settlers and some of the other cultures, so they spoke Afrikaans. And then as they did their homework, they would make little notes in Arabic script, but phonetically it would be the Afrikaans spelling of a word. So they still have samples of these. You can go see them in museum. Um, but I just find it so fascinating that, you know, of all the languages in the wow. world, <laughs> right. in Arabic first. Yeah, that's very, very interesting to know. Um, are there any... Uh, fun or useful slang terms that that people need to know so if if i was in south africa and i was um meeting people and going around the city what is something that i might hear frequently okay um and i think we briefly spoke about this in one of our lessons as well the word lacquer that is such a <laughs> lacquer word to use it's um traditionally in your germanic languages it's only associated with food so it refers to tasty or good but in Afrikaans, you use it for anything. So you could say the party was lacquer. You can say um, your friend came over, you had a lacquer visit. Um, you can use it all over. You can also use it just as a, an exclamation at the end of something. If you're very excited about something, you just say lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like we do awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh <-huh. laughs> Great. So, uh, and then... Um, could you tell us what are uh, some unique features that we might find in Afrikaans when studying the language? Um, one of the things that I love most, because it makes it so easy, is the fact that we do not have any kind of verb conjugation. So you don't have to worry about all these weird irregular forms, like when you start with a Romance language, for example. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, something else that is quite unique is the fact that we use double negation. So you will have two negative words in your sentence. Um, some people think that this may have been the influence of the French Huguenots because they came over in the 18th century, also settled in the Cape. And in French, you have double negation. However, mm -hmm. I recently read something interesting. They reckon it is very possible that the Dutch settlers already had this feature in their Dutch when they arrived. So the verdict is still out <laughs> where exactly <laughs> Um, but in terms of uh, Germanic languages, especially, this certainly is unique. Yes, and I think the the verb con no verb conjugation is a major selling oh, point <laughs> to, to learn. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, why why do you feel Afrikaans is is important uh, from a global perspective? Um, and, and could you give us some, uh, maybe an example of uh, when it's come into, uh, may have come into the spotlight or something like that? 
of course. Um, Afrikaans as an official language, designated as a language, that only happened in the previous century. So it's a fairly young language. We have proof that people have used it and written Afrikaans before, but they would still, in official capacities, use Dutch. So in the court systems, um, for example, the, the Bibles were written in Dutch, the sermons would be in Dutch. And then, of course, with the arrival of the English, that changed. But the official status only came about in the previous century. Um, something that is very unfortunate is that during the apartheid regime, Afrikaans was used as, um, I would say, as a power tool because all education had to happen in Afrikaans. And as you can imagine, if you do not speak a language and you have to learn mathematics or science in this language, it makes it very, very difficult. So there was a lot of opposition. Um, and I think, unfortunately, today there is still a little bit of a negative stigma attached to Afrikaans. Um, during the time of the, the English, there was also a lot of opposition. Um, people who spoke Afrikaans were often considered to be a little less intelligent, um, a little backward. So I feel like Afrikaans has always had a very bad rap. <laughs> and it's so unfortunate because the language itself is amazing. I, I know like the human aspects attached to it have made it seem very negative, but the language itself really is pretty awesome. I've really enjoyed learning it. Right. So for, um, for the other people out there who don't know it yet and are still on the fence, what are three reasons that you think people should learn Afrikaans? Okay, like we mentioned before, it's very easy. So that's the yeah. reason fun. <laughs> language, but you kind of worry about the difficulty level, Afrikaans is super easy. Um, I also think it's rather humorous, and there are a couple of weird sounds. It, it, it's something that is very enjoyable to learn. Um, I was just thinking about the diminutives. For example, the word for dog is hond, but the word for puppy comes out as hoinky. And it's just such a funny sounding word. <laughs> Thank you. What is that? So it's, it's kind of a fun language just you know, you just throw out these weird words and it's just entertaining. Um, and then of course, the culture and the history are both super interesting. Um, Africa, if you put it in the context of just the, um, the trading routes and everything that happened in the 17th century, it actually is pretty important just uh, in terms of what happened in the Western world during, during that time. Absolutely. And um, as we conclude, are there any pointers that you have for beginners? So they've had their first lesson, let's say. Um, what what do we do from there? <laughs> okay. Well, as with any other language, you have to start using it immediately. I like to, to give it a little bit of a context. Um, I don't like just doing uh, words, like a list of words, vocabulary. Now we're going to learn these 20 words. I think any person would want to immediately start and be able to have a conversation. So um, I think that's the most important thing. You start with your question words, you start with things like your alphabet so that you can at least just pronounce the words. And then you're off and you make sentences and questions and you just learn as you go along. Uh -huh. I keep building and building and using and using. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, right. So my final question for you is, what do you love the most about your language? What about Afrikaans is closest to your heart? I think it's a very expressive language. There's a lot of feeling in it. Um, there are even some interesting expressions, uh, and they often involve animals of the African continent. Um, for example, if I can think of one real quick, uh, there's an expression in English we would say to go fetch the baboon behind the hill, <laughs> which um, is kind of the equivalent of to put the cart before the horses. Okay. So you go out and you something hasn't even happened yet, but you are already anticipating the consequences. Um, so I just find it so descriptive. It's very creative. Um, yeah, I just love it. That's great. And I hope that everybody that thinks about uh, learning Afrikaans will give it a try and they'll love it just as much as I did. And um, uh, one of my other friends that uh, that is an Afrikaans learner that I'll be interviewing later. Thank you so much for your time. I have really enjoyed the lesson so much.
afar and I look forward to more. And and thank you for sharing uh, just your vast knowledge of, of the language with us. You're very welcome. It's been fun. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. My experience with Afrikaans was a positive one. As a native English speaker, it was a very easy language for me to get a feel of with the grammar structure and the cognates. One of the downsides, however, was the lack of resources. I was able to find several YouTube videos with grammar and a few eBooks on Amazon.com and a variety of movies on Amazon Prime. But don't just take my word for it. Let's talk to another person who's been studying the language longer than I have. One of the major features of these videos is to be able to speak to somebody who has been studying the language. Not many people I know even know of the language Afrikaans, so I knew immediately that the person I needed to go to was my friend Maureen. Maureen and I met about three years ago in a language challenge online and actually met in person at the Polyglot Conference in Greece. She actively studies many languages and you can follow her progress and travels on Language Learning Journey blog and Language Learning Journey on Instagram. Hello, who had it met you? It is by a, by a hope and dark. <laughs> so that is our little sample of Afrikaans <laughs> because that is um, the language that we're talking about this week on the 52 pickup project. Um, so one thing that I wanted to know um, was what led you to study Afrikaans of all languages? Um, well, quite accidental actually, because I was learning German with a tutor on Italka, who was very good, but she was actually from South Africa, so uh, she was teaching Afrikaans as well. And I decided to have a lesson just to see what it was like. I knew it was like Dutch. I don't really speak Dutch, but I know a little bit. And um, I had a lesson with her and it was really interesting and I really liked it. And because she was a really good teacher, I carried on. And I've been learning for just over a year now. Um, a year. So. Okay. I'm up to intermediate level. I, I can speak quite a lot now. I can read and write quite a lot. I've written some blog posts on Afrikaans now um, because it's not really a difficult language for us, especially if you know German already. So my German really helped me to, to learn the grammar quite quickly. Um, and I think that's why I stuck with it because I knew that I could make good progress. There are good teachers and the Dutch people understand me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, um, I, I, you know, after my first lesson, I felt kind of successful and, <laughs> and really motivated because I, I felt like I had a good understanding just in the first lesson of something, you know. Yeah. So you've yeah. been studying for a year and uh, you're doing the lessons on italki. Yeah. Um, do you do any other other uh, study like out of books or have you tried anything besides the online classes? Um, the online classes are the main thing that I do. Um, the, the teachers provide me with some materials but I also have the teacher self, um, the teacher self Afrikaans book which is good. Um, you get audio with that as well and um, then the, the teacher sent me some links to some YouTube channels, which they are aimed at native speakers, but there are um, uh, short videos that I can follow if they're not too, if the language is not too difficult. Um, also news websites and, and that kind of thing. And then um, one of my friends went to South Africa and she brought me this. <laughs> it's a magazine. Oh, nice. <laughs> So um, things like that, reading um, blogs, um, blogs, magazine articles online, um, I'm, I'm doing that as well. There are also some podcasts in Afrikaans, which are like maybe news, that sort of thing. I've downloaded some podcasts. So I can't, at the level I'm at the moment, intermediate, I can't understand everything that's made for native speakers yet, but there are certain things that I can do. There are also some YouTube videos that are aimed at children, children's stories in Afrikaans and some of them have the writing on there like subtitles as well and they're they're good for learners. Yeah. 
Have you have you watched any movies? Well, one of my teachers told me about uh, some movies that they had on Amazon Prime. So I uh, I checked out one of them. I haven't finished it yet, uh, and the name escapes me right now. But it's uh, about an author that disappears. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> So. No, I, I haven't seen any. Um, I'll be happy when I can read the thriller books that a famous South African author is, uh, I think he's called Dion Mayer, and he, all, he writes in English and in Afrikaans, and his books are the kind of books that I like. So when I can read one of his books in Afrikaans without struggling too much, then I'll be happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's my aim. That's my aim, if I can get to that stage then. Yeah, that's a great goal to have especially if it's like something that you really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what are what are your go-to resources whenever you're looking to um, to find, to study a new language? I mean, not mm -hmm. just Afrikaans, but um, what is the first thing you do whenever you go looking for resources? Um, well, if, uh, if there's a Teach Yourself book, I, I'll tend to buy something like that. Um, I'll look for videos on YouTube where I can maybe subscribe to a channel um, that's for learners of that language. Obviously, you don't get that with the smaller languages so much. Um, a podcast as well. I like to have a grammar book um, or a verb book, but there are good websites now for verbs, so you don't always need a book. So I think to start off, if I have a, like a verb book or access to a website with the verb conjugations, um, and something with audio, which is important as well. I do prefer, and I, and I think really I only progress with languages if I'm working with a teacher. I've never, I've never got to a high level without speaking practice. But yeah, I, I have to agree. <laughs> yeah, I, so if, if there's a language where there, there, there's no way I can get any speaking practice, either in my local area or with a teacher, I tend to prioritise the other languages where I can because that's because the way I make most progress is by speaking, making mistakes, and then you remember and you, you try and say the sentence again or use the same words again and, and get it correct next time. And that's how I improve and hearing the language, obviously, which you would with the conversation. Um, if I've only got books to use, I can never get past a basic level. I like to use the books uh, just for grammar support, I think, when I need something to just drill. But um, my my way of learning, I, I feel like I need a lot of hand-holding, <laughs> so I really need the guidance of a teacher. Um, otherwise, I, um, you know, just to keep me, um, you know, focused on, you know, what I should be learning in, in which order, that's the teacher seems to work best for me, too. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when you were choosing your teacher for Afrikaans, what were some of the qualities that you were looking for in a teacher, or just even not Afrikaans, just any any language? teacher? Well, the yeah. teachers who I use regularly, the ones who I gel with, who I look forward to having lessons with, um, and ones I stick with for long term, have to be people who make me feel at ease. Um, people who I could talk to about anything I like and the people who show interest in what I'm talking about. I don't want to have a language partner who is just going to sit there looking bored and not provide much help. Obviously, I'm paying for the lesson, so I want someone who's going to engage with me and who's going to ask me lots of questions. And there's got, not going to be any kind of silences where I'm expected to try and fill everything. You know, I, I expect a teacher to be able to do that, especially if I'm at a low level in the language, because if I'm at a low level, I can't just go in and speak for half an hour or an hour. I don't have the vocabulary. I need someone who leads the lesson in that, ca that case and provides vocabulary or resources and leads the conversation and helps me to come up with answers. If I'm at a higher level, I like uh, looking at newspaper articles and discussing them and a teacher who asks me lots of questions and makes me speak a lot. Um, that, that's what I prefer. So I do have a bunch of teachers that I, I use regularly for my regular languages and I won't change them unless something happens, like they leave I talking or something. Mm -hmm. 
that's I <laughs> that's what one of my worst fears is finding a really really good teacher and them not being able to to um, to teach anymore or something happening in my schedule to where we're no longer uh, time compatible. <laughs> so, that happened to me with Welsh, unfortunately. I had a very good teacher, I completed the A1 course with her and she stopped teaching on italki and uh, I've not found someone else that suits me as, as well as she did, as in the time schedule and how down to earth she was and just a nice person to like talking to a friend really and um, I've not I've not really found that again because when when it's a language where you don't have many teachers listed particularly for Welsh what seems to happen is a lot of them don't hang around long term they teach for a while and they disappear and then they're stuck again um, so I got onto the A2 level of Welsh and I'm just having to wait and see what happens really I'm, I'm, the thing is, I really like the language and I don't live far from the border and it's not difficult. It's it's not as difficult as some languages that I've done. So I wanted to uh, carry on. So that is a bit of a shame. Um, if it's a big language, say like, I don't know, a French or something, then chances are you are going to find another good teacher. Um, mm -hmm. It's just with the smaller languages, it is a problem. So um, when, um, has it been, difficult to find native speakers to practice with so if you have i i know you can book a lesson with a teacher and practice in a lesson but just um uh any any time have you been able to find a, a native speaker or somebody at a high level to to try your afrikaans on <laughs> no because where i live there are no foreigners really so where i live i don't I mean, I used to work in jobs where I was surrounded by Italian and Spanish speakers all day, which is why those are my strongest languages. I also went to work in Italy and Spain for a little while, um, so I've never lost those languages. I now maintain them on Italki. I do have friends from various countries who I can practice with, but as in my local area, I don't have anybody at all. <laughs> so if I don't use Italki, I won't have regular practice in anything, so, so I'm really dependent on it. Uh huh. And and so there have been no surprise opportunities to use Afrikaans yet, like accidentally running into somebody in a hotel or on the street nope. or on a bus. Not here, no. But at, at the events that I go to, um, mm -hmm. the, the polyglot gathering um, last time. Um, I got to practice Afrikaans with six Dutch people <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> who, who all uh, understood everything I said, which was good. Um, at the Polyglot conference this year, there is a native Afrikaans speaker coming and she's given a presentation, so I will get practice again. Oh, that's uh, great. And yeah. this is Japan, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, great. I I'm sorry I'm going to miss that because I know there's a lot of <laughs> Uh, really interesting presentations that are going to happen yeah. and I would have loved to been able to attend the uh, Afrikaans one. Um, what is the most difficult thing that you've encountered so far in your Afrikaans studies? Um, probably the, a lack of resources. It's not It's not like some of the smaller languages where it's really practically nothing. It's not like that, but it's not also not like German where you've got everything there very easily for every level. For Afrikaans, say you're looking for B1 level audio, you might struggle um, unless you're just using the audio with a textbook. But if you want YouTube lessons uh, or podcasts aimed at that level, it's, it's not that easy to find. It's more like looking for children's material or native material that's talking about quite a simple subject. Um, and then, of course, your italki lessons. So it's not, it, it really depends. I mean, there's a lot of TV shows now that are on YouTube in Afrikaans. And some of them, like I said, are split into short videos of different themes. And if it's a theme, say travel, I know a lot about travel because I talk about it a lot. I can watch that and probably understand most. So it really depends on the theme. Uh, so I'd say audio uh, resources pitched at different levels. Mm -hmm. And what are what are your goals for studying Afrikaans? Uh, are they travel or, or work? Or what would you like to see yourself do with, 
with this language knowledge? Um, I'd like to be at the stage where I can confidently read newspaper articles without having to look up many words uh -huh. um, and be able to have conversations spontaneously about most subjects, which is what I can do in Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, French, Catalan now, um, German to some extent, not as good as the Latin languages, but if my Afrikaans can get to the level of my Latin languages where I'm comfortable talking about pretty much any subject without having to think about it before or prepare anything, then, then I'm happy because then I know I'm fluent and that's, that's what I want. So you're a really active traveller, I think, uh, what, 50 plus countries, is that 50 right? 50 countries now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, any plans to uh, go to South Africa or any um, country that, that speaks Afrikaans and um, put the language into use? Um, hopefully in the future, yes. I haven't got anything planned at the moment, but yes, I would like to. Mm. That would be great. It would be nice if they would hold a, uh, some conference there. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, with all the languages that are spoken in, in South Africa, I, I think it's certainly a worthy country of, of yeah. a, a, some kind of polyglot uh, conference or gathering or, yeah. <laughs> or whatnot. Um, and what is your advice for anybody that might be looking at Afrikaans as a language to study? What would you tell them about it? I think it's a really interesting language because you've got a mix of different languages in there, like um, from the first uh, European um, immigrants to South Africa, but you also have some Indonesian influence in there as well. There's, there's a really good mix. Um, for anybody who knows German or Dutch, you're going to have a massive advantage <laughs> uh, with the grammar, although the grammar is a lot simpler than Dutch and German, um, but the word order is the structure like that with word order is very, very similar. Um, but the verbs in Afrikaans are a lot simpler than in German and Dutch. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for giving us your take on Afrikaans. It's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a really uh, fun language to study. And even though I'm covering 52, I think this is going to be one that I'm going to stick with. So yeah. This one's going on the list for sure. Thank you so much for <laughs> talking to, to me about Afrikaans. And I'll see you again. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this segment on Afrikaans, week one of the 52 Pickup Project. If you think Afrikaans is the language for you, go give it a try. Also, stay tuned for next week to find out what our next featured video is. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time.